Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films. In this video, we're going to be watching a video about NVIDIA DLSS 3.5. So as you all know, yesterday, Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty 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 released a new trailer for their update, whatever, for next month. And it mentioned 3.5 DLSS. So what the f*** is DLSS 3.5? Well, good question. Let's go check it out. AI is transforming the world, and computer graphics is no exception. Five years ago, we introduced DLSS, which revolutionized graphics with better That's speed and better image quality through artificial intelligence. That. Since then, the AI model behind DLSS just keeps learning, with new capabilities such as frame generation, increasing rendering speed by up to 4x with excellent image quality. Today, neural rendering takes the next big step forward with DLSS 3.5. DLSS 3.5 improves ray tracing with a new AI model that is more accurate and more beautiful than traditional rendering methods. Let me show you how. First, we need to understand how a ray traced image is computed. The game engine has the materials and geometry for the scene, but that doesn't tell us how the scene looks because we haven't computed how all the lighting interacts with the scene. To compute the final image with ray tracing, we send rays into the scene to interact with the lighting and geometry but we can never send enough rays into the scene to understand exactly how the scene looks because there are so many pixels and because the rays don't distribute themselves evenly throughout the scene. There's always holes in our understanding of every scene. There's Even offline holes. ray tracers have to deal with this problem. And we do this by using denoisers. There are multiple kinds of denoisers for every frame that are combining information across pixels in the frame by blending them together and across multiple frames by accumulating information in order to come up with our best estimate of how the scene looks. Denoisers have a few common challenges. Denoisers accumulate pixels from prior frames, in effect stealing rays from the past in order to increase detail, but they do so at the risk of introducing ghosting and removing dynamic lighting effects. For example, here you can see ghosting that's introduced when the denoiser grabs information from the past. So this is a very good point because as you all know, here on the channel, I always say I turn a denoiser off. This is because of this. It's just a denoiser just does so much that it just mushes the image so much, especially in path tracing. When I'm rendering in path tracing, I turn denoiser off. And if I have to denoise, I will denoise later and the vents are off. Because as you can see right here, that is why majority of your path tracing renders when you have denoiser on does not look good. It looks like mashed potatoes mixed with VIX. So I just want to clear that up. Frame in the wrong place. And you can also see in this example that the global illumination effects in this image were removed by the denoiser. Similarly, reflections can have lower detail because the denoiser blends information across the frame. The detail in this reflection was reduced because the denoiser blurred pixels together. Yep, looks like These days, ray tracing is followed by upscaling, and that makes the job of the denoiser even more challenging because the denoiser naturally removes high-frequency information in order to make a smooth image. Denoising is a difficult task, and upscaling is a difficult task. With AI, we have the opportunity to bring them together and train one model that's able to use all the available information to solve both problems together. With DLSS 3.5, we are introducing Ray Reconstruction, which runs on all RTX GPUs to provide the best image quality for ray traced effects by incorporating additional inputs from the game engine and a new AI model that does both super resolution and Ray Reconstruction at the same time. DLSS 3.5 is trained on five times more data than DLSS 3. This was necessary because of the diversity of ray tracing effects that the model needs to recognize and work with. We've trained this new DLSS model to recognize many different ray tracing effects, to make smarter decisions about temporal and spatial information reuse, and to retain all the high frequency data that's necessary for high quality upscaling. Ray reconstruction is smarter than denoisers. The DLSS AI is trained on a huge data set of images created using an offline rendering process with far more computation than could be available in real time. The AI then recognizes certain patterns that correspond to effects such as global illumination and uses information from its training process in order to reconstruct a more realistic and dynamic image. DLSS ray reconstruction generates higher quality ray traced images. 
For example, here we're comparing DLSS off to DLSS 3.5, and you can see that DLSS reduces ghosting and improves the dynamic lighting. You can see reflections can be much sharper using ray reconstruction, even in movement. Creative applications have a wide variety of content, which is challenging for traditional denoisers because they need hand tuning for each scene. As a result, you get suboptimal image quality when previewing a new scene in a creative app. With DLSS ray reconstruction, the AI recognizes all types of scenes, and so you can get much higher image quality when you're previewing a scene before committing to a final render. Altogether, DLSS gives you several AI-powered options to increase performance, enhance image quality, or both. It's all possible wow. thanks to the specialized tensor Wait cores in every RT. So it's going to be available, ray reconstruction is going to be available for all the GPUs. And then frame gen just for the 4 series. The XGPU. Let's see how it all comes together. We have a scene from Cyberpunk 2077 in RT Overdrive mode. It's beautiful, but it's not playable without AI to improve the experience. We start by enabling DLSS Super Resolution. DLSS Super Resolution reconstructs a 4K output from a much lower resolution input and provides a huge performance boost and great image quality. But we can do better. Next, we turn on DLSS Frame Generation, which analyzes sequential frames in order to create additional frames that further increase smoothness. Finally, we can turn on DLSS Ray Reconstruction, which further improves image quality for ray traced effects, and in this scene also improves FPS just a bit. The reason that can sometimes happen... Work. So this is pretty interesting because Ray Reconstruction works for all RTX GPUs, so potentially you can get this quality without an RTX 4 card, but just like with this FPS right here. That's freaking insane. Is that we're replacing multiple denoisers with one AI model. In general, the speed of games using ray reconstruction is going to be about the same as the speed of games without. Five years ago, we started a revolutionary journey to redefine graphics with neural rendering and artificial intelligence. DLSS has come a long way in five years, and today's most immersive and realistic experiences now rely critically on the power of AI. Yet the transformational impact of AI is just getting started. We can't wait to see where we'll be five years from now. All right, so, so let's talk about this real quick. So DLSS 3.5 without frame generation is available on all RTX GPUs. All right, as amazing as that sounds, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be complaining about this. They always do. But one of the thing, and I can guarantee you, one of the argument that's going to come out of this is that why should we have to buy an NVIDIA card to get fake frames? This is the biggest argument right now with DLSS 2 and 3 is like, why pay money, extra money, to get or buy fake frames? Well, my counter argument to that is, to me, a video game is not real. At the end of the day, a video game is fake frame anyway. So if we're looking at this RTX 4 lineup right now with the 4060, I believe is 299, 4060 Ti is 399. That's the 4 series I'm talking about here. And now we have DLSS 3.5 with ray reconstruction. And again, with the Cyberpunk 2077 overdrive, that's baby path tracing. You can really hate all you want on NVIDIA, but you have to admit that they are pushing graphics forward with all these technologies that they are creating. You know, like you don't have to like NVIDIA, but you have to admit that all of these technologies they're pushing, and this is actually an amazing explanation for DLSS 3.5, rake reconstruction, and actually breaks down on how graphics works with reflections and global illumination. I wasn't originally going to buy Phantom Liberty, because mainly because I don't have enough hard drive, but now I'm curious to see how it's going to look. The hardest thing, even right now with Unreal Engine 5 and Lumen, is reflections to look good because it just, it, it's blurry as heck. And we're talking about real time. This is real time reflections in a video game and it's that sharp. 
If you look at it, you know, this is your typical game. It, if you can reconstruct reflection so that it is not blurry and mushy in a cyberpunk game, I, I got to see this. I got to freaking see this in actual gameplay with my RTX 4000. And again, just for the sake of argument, RTX 5000 is probably not far away from now. That's what's exciting is now you have AI and you have hardware going up simultaneously and eventually we're gonna have like path tracing gaming man this is this is crazy and as you all know unreal engine 5 is being used for the cyberpunk orion which is the next uh next installment of cyberpunk so again that's that's very interesting and that's pretty much it for this video i'm pretty stoked about this technology and what i'm hoping for is to get a hold of dlsf 3.5 in unreal engine 5 if they're gonna develop it there